in 2012, I was uh, in the wealth management industry. I had a good job, I had a promising career, a good trajectory, right? Healthy family, I lived in a really great community, I had a reliable transportation, food in my belly, clean water to drink, and I was miserable. I felt like I was in a vice constantly. I didn't understand it. I didn't know how I was supposed to apply my life. I got a black belt in like exploring how not to live my life. What I shouldn't be doing, I got real friggin' good at like figuring that stuff out and exploring it. I was like a spelunker, eating shit sandwiches. It was, it was brutal. But I was so frustrated, I remember one night I was sitting at the kitchen table. You know, I was overweight. I was smoking, I was drinking, drugging, anything to like numb myself. And mind you, I had so many amazing things going on in my life. So much to be thankful for, and don't get me wrong, I was grateful. But there was this piece of me that was hollow and missing. And I couldn't put my finger on it, I, I didn't know. So I'm sitting there, probably drunk, like at one in the morning at the kitchen table. And I'm just like asking life, I'm going, please, show me how I'm supposed to apply my life, because this isn't it. I feel like I'm dying. Like I felt like I was constantly on the verge of drowning. And luckily for me, sometime near that period, I was at a cocktail reception and a new friend of mine, the CEO and president of Lighthouse Central Florida and Lighthouse Works was there and she put her hand on my shoulder. She was introducing me to a new leader in the company and she put her hand on my shoulder and she volunteered me that I was gonna help start a young executives committee for the organization. Now I, hadn't, I didn't know anything about nonprofits. There are 501c3 Lighthouse Central Florida. Didn't know anything about that, but what I knew is I said, yes ma'am, and I showed up and every time I went there, it felt so good. And so this new dimension started opening up for me. And even though I still was doing the work I was doing in wealth management, there was like I could breathe. I got a taste, right? There was a spark. And that spark continued to, to chirp, right, until it turned into a flame for me. And about a year later, I left volunteering for them and I actually went to work for Lighthouse Central Florida. I was the head of the fundraising and communications. And everything changed. Uh, the process for me showed me the power of aligning your profession, your purpose, and your passion. And magic shit happens really quickly. It was really fun. And it also taught me that I could participate in business, real business, apply the business practices and principles that I, I found fun, legitimately fun, and generate outcomes that were meaningful to me. You see, Increasing shareholder value, Rob, plug your ears. Increasing shareholder value is really important. It just doesn't like my way. It just doesn't get me excited. Thank God there are people out there who get excited about it. For me, it's not. But what I found is generating outcomes that lead to the empowerment and the improvement of human life, sign me up. That's, that's a great time. I'll get out of bed for that. And so I went to work at Lighthouse. So really quickly on Lighthouse to frame Lighthouse works for you and what we're doing with our social enterprise nonprofit company. For the last 42 years, if you are born blind or you become so in any stage of your life or severely visually impaired, there's one organization in Central Florida you turn to, whether it's your two month old baby, your 17 year old kid, knucklehead, or your 62 year old dad, one organization. So we're working with from birth to the end of life, teaching people how to live beyond the restrictions of vision loss and blindness. And oftentimes for Lighthouse, and it's the only organization that serves Central Florida at what, what could be 50 to 80,000 Central Floridians who might qualify for our services. And oftentimes these services are the difference between a child growing up through the age of five with the disposition of, well, I can't, you see, I'm blind. You have to help me. Or for them to work through every developmental milestone that you and I went through, each time going, I did it, I did it, I did it, I did it, and the seed of I can growing in that child. And then being a confident lifelong learner and more prone to say, I'll go first. Or an adult who goes blind, 
who becomes isolated and becomes block locked and essentially lives their life in a dusty apartment wearing a dirty t-shirt listening to daytime TV and waiting for change that will never arrive or for them to discover a new dimension in their lives, skill explore, get their confidence back and get back into the workplace and get back into their community and live because that's, that's what we're here to do, yeah? So obviously based on what I've just told you, I got pretty excited about being a part of that mission. But what's really cool too, well, before I tell you about Lighthouse Works, there's, there are a few influences that make Lighthouse Works so critical. One, are the, the mission for Lighthouse Central Florida is charting a course for living, learning, and earning with vision loss. And we had, to date, been knocking the cover off the ball on living and learning. But it's the earning piece, not just us, around the country. The, learn, the, the earning piece, right? Also, over the next three decades, eye disorders are projected to double. Between now and 2050, double mostly because of the aging baby boomers and the top causes of blindness and visual impairment are age-related. Glaucoma, diabetic retinopathy, and macular degeneration, right? And seven out of 10 working age adults who are blind or visually impaired are unemployed or out of the labor market altogether. Most of them just quit trying because when they show up with a cane, the, and it's not malicious, the business thinks you're incapable of doing anything. When you go out to dinner, they might ask your wife what you're gonna eat, despite you having been an entrepreneur and you've got a master's degree, and you're fully capable of doing whatever you'd like to do with your life, right? So the indignity of that. So in, in response to that, we created Lighthouse Works, which is a social enterprise, as Rob teed up. And Rob and the Entrepreneurs in, in Action program actually were instrumental. We owe them a debt of gratitude because they helped us when we were trying to figure this thing out. And so it's a social enterprise nonprofit company under Lighthouse Central Florida. It's got its own board and corporation. And it's a company with multiple business lines to drive a double bottom line. One, create competitive employment for people who are blind or visually impaired, right? If you go to Lighthouse Works or Lighthouse Central Florida, we've got about 100 people. Roughly half of them are blind. There's no special classification of employees. They all submitted a resume, interviewed, and earned their job no different than I did. We have five core values, just five. They're awfully important, and every single one of us are held to the same standards for that, so create competitive employment for people who are blind or visually impaired and generate revenue we can send to Lighthouse Central Florida. Because over half the revenue of that nonprofit, other than philanthropy, is coming from fulfilling contracts for a state agency. Rob, plug your ears, dealing with the government and relying on funding from them, you know, you get a cast iron stomach, right? So at Lighthouse Works, we've got a supply chain division where we supply uh, millions of dollars worth of medical supplies for the U.S. military, the Combat Lifesaver Kit. One in eight warfighters has that kit uh, because I think it's 79% of deaths in the field of battle happen before a medic can get there and only one in 40 are medics. So they've got this kit and we're supplying those medical supplies to them. We build about between 100 to 160,000 magic band boxes for Disney every month. 94% right now of our direct labor is being born before being performed by people who are blind or visually impaired. We also have a commercial call, contact center, the Foresight 360 call center. In typical call centers, you'll have attrition rates of 60%. It's very expensive. All the managers, call center managers do is recruit, train, chain smoke, recruit, chain, chain smoke, right? And they don't pay attention to the automation that can happen in a call, call center if you understand the technology and you can innovate those solutions. We do. For the last 42 years, we've been applying process technology and training to equal the playing field for people who are blind or visually impaired. Our attrition is below probably 5% right now in our call center. And our agents are more experienced people. We have people with college degrees and master's degrees and entrepreneurs who are in that call center. And we have technology services where we do website accessibility compliance services. We created our own app that took a labor uh, process, re labor reporting process from a four day process to a push of a button with our app. And we're going to be taking that to market too. In our fifth full year of business, we were able to pledge $200,000 upstream to Lighthouse Central Florida. And then last year, we, uh, we uh, grew direct labor of uh, blind, uh, blind labor by over 50%. So we're at, when I got there in 2013 as an employee, we probably had 58 employees among the whole company today. We have 100, and we're growing. We're positioned right now to be the largest employer of the blind or visually impaired in the southeastern United States, right here in Orlando, and we're going to do it. I'll end with this. So 
The implications of this, this is a journey of thinking you can't and then saying you can. I didn't think I had a future. I didn't know that I had this career. I couldn't put my finger on it. The people that go through Lighthouse Central, oftentimes, Central Florida oftentimes are scared and they think their life is over and they don't see the new possibilities until, until we make them drink the Kool-Aid. And then, and people who go through that then, once they have their confidence back, think they can't work and they can. And the community around us thinks they can't do it and they can. Around the country, hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of people who are blind or visually impaired are doing things like manufacturing 7,000 of the parts on the last Boeing 747 you flew in. If you look at a warfighter in the field of battle, nearly everything they're wearing or is dangling off of them that isn't a weapon was manufactured by the blind. We're doing it right here in Orlando, too, right? I want to leave you with an anecdote because, yes, it's important that we are creating these employment opportunities, career, life-changing career opportunities for people who are blind. Yes, it's important that we become the financial sustainability for ourselves for Lighthouse Central Florida. So over the next 40 years, that blind baby is going to have a place to turn to. Their parents are going to be able to bring them to Lighthouse Central Florida. We love, look, there are 50 to 80,000 people. We need philanthropy, all right? If you're a donor, please don't stop. We need you. There are 50 to 80,000 people. But here's what we love. We love saying we are addressing an important social challenge in our community. And that is we are taking people who were relying on our community and our economy and turning them into people who are contributing to our community and our economy and helping them realize this new future for themselves and standing shoulder to shoulder with our donors and paying for it ourselves as well. That's important. I'll leave, I'll, but, but, but that's really cool. But just really quickly, the, the implications of this are generational. My friend Kim, my colleague, w was a mother of six, because she's crazy. She's a mother of six. Her husband owned a restaurant in Oviedo, and he unexpectedly died. She's blind. They're, they're at threat of losing their home, all their livelihood being homeless. She finds out about Lighthouse Central Florida and goes through the services for an adult. Gets her confidence back, her feet back under her. There's the stabilization of crisis, restoration of hope and empowerment happens in her life. She finds out about a job at Lighthouse Works. She gets a job at Lighthouse Works. Today, before, when her kids would get ready for school, mom's at home. When her kids get home from school, mom's at home. Today, when they're getting ready for school, mom's getting ready for work. When they get home from school, mom's not home, she's at work. Kim's getting notes in her lunch bag that say, have a great day at work today, mommy. And those children are growing up and their character, their work ethic, their values are being shaped by their mom's demonstration of what empowerment is. And guess what? They're, some of them are going to grow up and be parents and shape the next little ones and the next little ones and the next little ones. So what we're doing isn't just about a job, a product, a service about Kim. It's about altering the the trajectory of a family lineage forever. It's pretty cool. And I get paid to participate in that, which is fortunate, right? So I just, w just challenge you. I was just at Luminar, Luminar uh, Tech uh, with Jason Eichenholz. He gave me a tour yesterday. And in this technology company that is exploding and innovating these sensors that are going to automate cars, which our blind community is very excited about, right? It's going to revolutionize the world. Guess who he has in there? People with developmental disabilities, disabled veterans. Someone who's blind or visually impaired is one of the catalysts in that company, Nico. Unbelievable. So I just challenge you, when you go back to your business, go back into the community, take a different look at what that potential workforce can be. And think of the, the attrition rate being not 60%, but 5%. Thinking about the culture and the dedication our employees have, because seven out of 10 of their peers don't have jobs, and they do. You can unlock that for your business by recognizing the unique values in, in very distinct populations, be they blind, developmentally dis disabled, veterans, felons. There's power if we're willing to unlock it. Thank you, guys.